Hey folks, you've been watching us here in Bend, Oregon at the Nosler headquarters and Dakota has done his best to teach a guy like me how to make my 308 an elk killing machine. But I'm curious for the average person, because I showed up and you had all mm -hmm. this here. So for the average viewer watching this who's now intrigued and says, yeah, I want to go and load my own mm -hmm. ammo. What, what would you suggest the, the starting person do as far as equipment, selection of things, manuals, all that stuff? Well, your first thing is going to need to be, you're going to get some sort of kit. Uh, our CBS makes quite a few really high quality kits and okay. varying levels. You can start with uh, the basic rock chucker introductory kits or you can get all the way up like Explorer Plus and whatnot. Okay. Um, I would recommend starting relatively simple. Single uh -huh. stage stuff, like a rock chucker or like this, same thing. Um, single stage so press. This here meaning is a single it stage, one stage right. at a time. Exactly. It's a one okay. stage press. It's not a progressive. Um, even if you move on from this press eventually and, and don't use it as your primary press, mm -hmm. they're still extremely useful for okay. decapping, for resizing, for a seating purpose, for a, a handgun. Okay. Well, any, there's a whole bunch of different things you can use these for. A lot of guys, you'll see two or three presses set up on their bench just like this, okay. that are older style that they'll leave or you know ones that they've moved on from. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to start small and then build up from there for sure. Okay. Um, basic bench setup. If you're right-handed, typically you'll run it on the right-hand side, just because usually it's your right hand. You make, yeah, yeah, motion with your left kind of thing. Um, Safety-wise, sturdy table, dedicated space for it. That's oftentimes like lockable door or other. If you have kids, keep yeah. you know, obviously if you have powders, powders yeah, and all kinds primers of and other stuff here. Yep. Okay. Um, another one that's really important for for new reloaders is distraction limitation. Just because if you're trying to talk to people and and oh. deal with um, Multitasking phone calls and or reloading TVs is not or, the greatest thing. You can do it eventually, but I'd recommend starting. <laughs> yeah, I to where multitask you're, you're and tie my shoe. So yeah, yeah. And and I better set this someplace where there are no distractions. It's it's best to start that way, and that way you can follow through all the steps that are outlined and in, in, uh, get yourself a high quality reloading manual or guide like RG8. Um, RG, reloading, reloading guide, guide yep, eight. nozzle reloading so guide is the latest one. Where and, they can get it online. Yeah, and a lot of the RCBS kits will actually come with it now too. So oh, so that oh that there you go. See, that's what happens when yep. you have bad eyes. You don't even see the green RCBS. Yep, yep. And they've that. got they've got them in the kits on a lot of them. Um, so okay. read that to start with. And get yourself started into it and familiarized with the tools and, and pieces that you're going to be using, and. Uh, one other thing I'd always note, and I've said it before, is, is anytime you're working with primers or powder, keep them in the factory containers. There's a reason why they're sealed like this or they're okay. isolated into uh, you know, individual cartons like this, just because of the way they can be handled. So put the stuff back in there, store it in, in a relatively cool, dry place, you know, 60 to 70, normal household temperature stuff. Don't store it up in the top of your attic. And then uh, keep it organized and keep it clean also. Yeah. And develop a routine, something that you'll always you know, be consistent with and, and follow through the steps the same way. Okay. Because if you start changing and varying what you're doing, you know, that's where you start getting uh, issues that you, you didn't realize you even built into it. So okay. consistency is key. Okay. Sure. And so if someone's starting out, if they wanted mm -hmm. to save a few steps and a few tools, they could buy prep you wrath. Yep, you can. And that's a great way to start. It, it takes away from a bunch of the tools that you need from case trimmers and, and uh, chamfer and debrew tools and stuff like that. That uh, it's already done. It's weight sorted. It's prepped. It, it takes away a bunch of steps. And uh, as you get more into reloading, you'll realize too how much time it takes to actually prep all that brass. <laughs> yep. So here we've got this one powder. Someone who started out, would you suggest they just start with one powder? powder type or yeah whole... typically you know what you'll most of the time do is end up with a single powder you're working with obviously one at a time on the bench is a good safety procedure also to where you don't mix and match but if you're going to start with a single powder work with that one put it away if it doesn't work get another one obviously if you need something that's different slightly burn rate or other um, bargate rl15 
Um, H4350, IMR4350, those are extremely universal powders for a lot of different cartridges out there. So if you're going to end up getting into it, um, if you look around and find any of those, those are applicable from a lot of cartridges all the way from 270 down to 243 and any of the, the mid-size stuff, even 30-06 and 308s and whatnot too. So okay. yeah, there's a lot of stuff that uh, if you you look through the reloading guide, you'll find that the powders that you'll you'll need oftentimes are the same ones even for 223 all the way up to 30 out six. Okay. So look through there first, find what powders you actually need to get. You don't need to get a whole bunch to start with because oftentimes if you use quality components, you're not going to need that many. Right. You know, oftentimes there's guys that have been running two powders for 20 years in three different wow. rifles. Okay. So to get started, it doesn't take that much. I mean, a basic okay. kit like this, like you say, is in the low 300s and you can get everything you need to get started right here and it you'll find out if you like it and if you don't like it yeah so and, and you're not out much if you don't so yeah. definitely look to gain some some uh cost savings in the long term if you do reload for sure because yeah. as soon as you start turning that brass over and, and sizing it and, and redoing it you started saving money right there the yeah. second time you're loading it okay so and then one other thing the audience has noticed we've been wearing glasses this whole time absolutely it's yep. when you're dealing with primers that yep. boom, you know you could have an accidental yep absolutely anything bubble. anytime you have primers out or even powder on the table um, absolutely no smoking no impact <laughs> stuff right. and that's why oftentimes wood benches are a good idea as well because they're softer they're, they don't have the impact that you can get off of steel when okay. you're dealing with primers so and then static also is another thing to consider on there so oh, really? yeah okay. yeah wood's a good good bench material for sure so well thanks dakota you've been a huge help i, I i'll be honest with you reloading has been an intimidating task for mm -hmm. me and if it was for me someone who shot his whole life who knows a lot of reloading guys, mm -hmm. I suspect for some in our audience, it was a little overwhelming also. So. Yeah, it can be. I mean, there's a lot of steps to it and there's a lot of different processes. And, and to be honest, there's a lot of opinions too. So, <laughs> Everything you know, in hunting or shooting, absolutely. You, you have 10 guys, you got 20 opinions, yep, right? That's absolutely right. Well, so. there you have it, folks. For not a huge investment, you can be set up to start doing this. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about consistency and repeatability and having a, a, a pattern, a process, a procedure, that is both in terms of how you do it to get the most accurate outcome, but also just from a safety standpoint. Absolutely, so, yep, important. Great, well thanks Dakota, I appreciate you bet. it. You bet, it's been fun. Thanks for watching folks.